Shrek 4D is still here. Remember when the first Shrek movie came out and it had that dictatorship that vaguely looked like Disneyland and that apparently passed for groundbreaking satire? Well, if there's one thing Universal loves more than actors on stilts... Who am I kidding? There is absolutely nothing Universal loves more than actors on stilts. Seriously, which Universal executive has a fetish for six-foot-long legs? But a close second is snarky jokes about Disney parks. And they can be quite funny, but after too many of them, it just comes off as petty bitterness. Or maybe it's cynical of me to infer any bitterness towards the mouse from a children's franchise where the Eisner caricature is named F***wad. Anyway, you enter the building and find yourself in the little guy's dungeon, where those beloved sarcastic takes on public domain characters are being held prisoner. You need to tell them the story! Sure! <clears throat> a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I feel like they would have made that reference a lot crueler if they knew Disney would end up owning Star Wars. So the mirror recap scenes from the movie, just to make sure that every single tourist understands every upcoming callback. I play a ghost who coincidentally looks just like me and happens to be named John Lithgow. I'll make you talk. Thelonious, prepare the auditorium. <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall, tell them what will happen to the wall. I must go prepare. I'll be in to torture you later. Huh, they outright admit that watching the show will be torture. So we enter the auditorium and immediately any pretense of us being in the Duloc world or witnessing an actual event is thrown out the window in favor of an ordinary 3D narrative short film. A short film where all the characters we just saw being held prisoner are no longer prisoners, because consistency. The story begins almost immediately after the first movie, with Shrek and Fiona preparing for their honeymoon. Aw, oh, what's wrong, princess? You shouldn't be this unhappy until years into the marriage. No, oh, I get it. It's because she's sitting in an onion. Let me guess. Yeah. Overwhelmed by love. No. It's because it's an onion. Yes. Yeah, onions make people cry. Yep. Yeah. Wait, wait. Yep. Onion. It's a fing onion. No, I'm sitting in an onion. This carriage is one big onion. Oh, now I get it. But when a subverted callback gag disables Fiona's self-defense, it's up to Shrek and Donkey to save the princess. We got a donkey driving a carriage made from an onion. It's dark and our horses are wearing sunglasses. It's funny because I could be outside watching the Blues Brothers show right now. Yes, it seems John Lithgow is still hung up on the girl who left him at the altar. Jeez, Fraser got over Diane faster. Also, John Lithgow was the original choice to play Fraser. Full circle! Stop playing hard to get! Stop it! You know I'm irresistible. <laughs> I guess I'm glad this was made far too early for him to start singing blurred lines. Huh, ghosts can be destroyed by fire. Who knew? Let's go home and make some waffles. Have I told you lately that I love you? Waffles? <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> Once upon a time, a character in a movie mentioned making waffles, and this line became excessively overquoted. You're right, that is a long story. And then the movie ends with the same basic gag as the end of Philhar Magic. Sure, they came out the same year, so we can't realistically presume either one of them ripped it off from the other, but Philhar Magic did it better. So that was Shrek 40, and it's fine. I'm just not interested enough in Shrek to care about it. But if you are, you can meet Shrek afterward at. I have seen the face of evil! 